I've removed the covers off this so we can see inside. And we'll hit, we have our wire coming. It goes into this uh, disconnect box and then it goes through that uh, little plug-in and then it goes out through the fuses and it goes to our unit. So the first thing to check is the power coming into the box. We want to make sure we have power coming into the box. And we do, we have 246 volts. If this had read zero, then we would suspect our circuit breaker was tripped. And uh, that's pretty common for the circuit breaker to trip if you have uh, your outdoor fan motor or capacitor go bad. And the remedy for that uh, is to turn the breaker off and back on, and that should reset it. Now, also, uh, let's say we did have power, we do have power, but we didn't read power at our, uh, at our contactor down there. We would switch our, our VOM meter to ohms, <coughs> and we would test across each of these fuses, and we should get a reading like we are here. You can see it, 0.9 resistance, and then we'll test the other one and they're both good. If we were to, to put our, our probes across the fuse here and this meter didn't do nothing, it stayed on that symbol right there, which is infinite resistance, that would tell us that uh, one of the fuses is bad. So we'd want to replace it. Uh, we'd want to replace that fuse with the same type of fuse as the one that's in it, which is uh, either, they're called either a slow blow or time delay fuse. So we have power going through our uh, disconnect box, through our fuses, and it's feeding into our unit. It's going through the contactor, and that's basically the only things we can check. Uh, one thing I want to point out is uh, get yourself a meter like this, borrow one, whatever. Like I said, this costs $2.99. Um, if you try to use a test light to figure this out, then that's probably not going to work because uh, you're going to get a lot of false readings if you're working with... Uh, 230 volts with a test light um, it's just not going to work because you have power flows through motors back whatever and your your little test light will light up when in fact uh, you don't have the proper voltage so test lights are out so what if your unit looks different than the one we were talking about well in here this is a carrier unit in here we also have our run capacitor our contactor and our outdoor fan motor so it really doesn't matter what brand of unit you have they're all pretty much the same like I said they all have the same components in them hear that If your air conditioner sounds like that, then uh, you don't need to investigate any further. You need a new fan motor. Now, a lot of times when it comes to replacing fan motors, people are intimidated by the wiring aspect of it. They, they're like, well, how can I replace the, the wiring? Because, you know, I don't know if I can hook the wires up because there's, there's 5 million wires in this stupid thing. But one thing I wanted to show you well, I have the wires here that go to the fan motor, and as you can see, there's three wires. So it's not really that big of a leap to uh, figure out where these three wires go and what they're supposed to do. And I'm gonna, we're gonna go through that uh, right now. What I wanted to show you was uh, the removal of this fan blade. Sometimes it can be pretty tough to get these fan blades off because uh, they're outside in the weather all the time and uh, the shaft gets rusty and it rusts to the hub and it can be kind of a challenge to remove them sometimes. Um, often you'll have uh, part of the motor shaft will stick out, you know, maybe a few inches. So what I do to start with is I just get my uh, sandpaper and I just polish up that motor shaft and just go around and around and around and polish it all up. Uh, polish it so it looks like brand new. And that's going to aid you a lot in uh, getting your fan blade to slip off. Then uh, loosen up your set screw here. Put 
Now, what I like to do, a uh, way I found that works pretty good, is you get your channel locks, and it's better if you have a high quality pair of channel locks. If uh, you have some channel locks from the 99 cent store, it might be a little tough to do this, but um, I grab it from underneath. Never grab it on top if you have a <coughs> part of the shaft protruding here because you'll get it all scuffed up and scratched and then it's going to be just that much harder to remove the, the fan blade. And usually if you grab it underneath here and then you grab the inside and give it a twist, it'll usually twist back and forth. And it, once you get it to twist back and forth, you pretty much got it beat. Um, one thing to keep in mind is, is don't grab it from these outside edges because these outside, the outside part of this fan blade are very fragile and if uh, you bend one of them, then your fan blade is going to be out of balance and you'll ruin it. So just grab it from the inside only. This inner part is a lot stronger and just wiggle it back and forth with some upward pressure and uh, before you know it, it'll just pop off. Okay. Okay, let me flip this around a little bit. You may recall that this plastic cover was initially on our unit, and that just pops off with a screwdriver pretty simply. What I wanted to show you was these bolts. We have uh, four bolts that hold the motor to the lid here, to this grate. Uh, it's called the bird guard. And, um, the good thing is that all motors will fit all units. So this, this bolt pattern they have is a universal design and pretty much any motor you get is gonna go ahead and bolt up to this grill. 